Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saikon and today we're continuing our 2 against the Overlord campaign. It is time for Operation A Dead Man's Widow where I'm taking on a very difficult mission but I was intrigued by the reward. That in itself is a good one. I like it. Um, I'm wondering are we theoretically countering a dark event with that? Counter dark event, counter dark event. Hmm. Counters nothing? Alright, Lost World is not a problem. The hidden event meh, may be a problem. We don't know what it is. This here would give us supplies. You know what? We're just going to counter that one. Very good. Neutralize the field commanders, of course. What I meant to say, we're bringing Hogbite and his crew back, and I'm stoked to play with Hogbite again. It's almost like uh, finding your favorite comfy sweater after a while of missing it and getting back into it. Let's go, baby. Alright, we landed. Wow, that's a <clears throat> large area. Luckily for us, it's a non-timed mission, so we can slowly but surely advance. Um, our shooters are going upstairs, front line over here. Okay. <clears throat> I know this train quite well. There is high ground here and I think over here. Maybe I was wrong. We definitely want to go and grab the high ground. Guide my hand. Oh yeah, there's our high ground. Yep. Yeah. I remembered it correctly. That, that, a little bit of that, definitely that, and that, and we're bracing Overwatch, and good. Trying to get that high ground here will be paramount. Haha, <laughs> okay, well, that changed the complete outlook of the mission. Moving to position. I comply. Solid copy. Good, we're moving to here first. Sniper moves to here. Heavy moves to there, and let's try to get the general. Okay, couple more uh, mm, patrols that are running around, but the main idea is to get the general. Right, opening the door. Uh, let's try to engage. I think we're going to be alright. Might cost us a bit of explosives. But generally speaking, we should be alright. Ok, 
Okay, let's get this guy down. The explosion helps us. <laughs> We're suppressing the general. General stands in the open. Okay, I was expecting a bit more. Getting the shield bearer down, maybe pulling another pack. I do have an idea. I don't want to use teamwork yet, so we're just going to parry here. More overwatch. And the idea is don't let him run away. If he's disoriented, that'll F him up. I fought him already and I didn't like it. Uh, watchful, end of that turn, regenerates lost health, can be hit well from high ground. Well, I remember fighting him in uh, the forest once. Okay, well, here we go again. Great question. Uh, the Overwatch did not really work that well. Hitting the cho uh, the uh, general. Removing cover. Very well. That was an excellent hit. But we're focusing on the general. Who mysteriously, I said one hit point. Is that true? No, three. Okay. Well, well, well. The destroyer commando definitely is a problem. So 
So let's take that one out first. Um, to play efficiently, reload first and then take them out. Five hit points, okay. Now we've not, mm -mm, we're not charging in. Did we just pull them? No. Yes? No. <laughs> That's why I did not want to charge in. All right, parrying. In case you wonder why, it's time for teamwork, baby. Get the Edward General down. Overwatch here. Get this guy down, but can't get the Viper down yet, so let's see. Well, I can tell you this is going to hurt either way. For starters, uh, let's break line of sight for the guys over here. That's why I'm closing the door. Charging over. Opening. Not finding another pack, which is good. Raptor squad. He's been taken out. And Vivern takes a massive hit. I do have parry, but uh, bind, uh, the ability of the uh, Vivern, uh, overrides parry. Uh, it's the only ability, and, and as well as the Sectobot uh, Lightning Field ability that I know uh, which does it. So, fuck that, and we're instead going up here. Alright, burning. That is double move. Apparently that's not a double move, apparently he's totally fine with going blazing pinions right into the ceiling. F you. He just very much styled on us. Just what we need, Spectral Army. A couple of stun lances. That's a hog bite kill. And let's get her down, please. Oh boy, hog bite, you're delivering. You definitely earned your promotion right there. Anti stun lancer, mine. Moving 
And let's focus on the Archon. Good hit. Unfortunately, this guy starts to dodge. Starts to become a little bit funny here. Come on. Moving over here and hunkering down to get the fire. Perry. And unfortunately these guys are left uncontrolled, but the Archon would have been potentially even worse. back so let's get rid of uh, these stun lances there we very much know there are two more I think sectors back over there in the meantime moving up nice little shotgun to the face appreciate that Continuing to use Hawkbite in order to strike the enemies down. Like it. Parry here. Moving over here. Can't see the war. Oh, we can see him. Let's start to shred him. Very good, that's the start. Unfortunately, he stands behind indestructible cover. Absolutely. Whatever you say. Good bracing. Listen, that's a difficult one. Yeah, I think we're just overwatching here, to be honest. Can't reach him fully, but there is a chance for... There is a chance for an execution. Should have potentially healed myself. Hogbite is immune to dazing. Nice try. Good, moving over here. Free revive. Implacable gets back into business. Good. Continuing to move up. 50-50 to shred him. Unfortunately, that's a miss. I'm not being able to shred him here either, I think. 
Adrenaline rush into free heal. Implacable just makes sure he's topped off. There we go, that's my man. And Hogbite could definitely move in. But before we're doing that, I think needing the target here is the right uh, call. We do have free reload, so might as well do that. There we go. 19% not good enough. I think what we're going to do instead is overwatch. Fifty-fifty, and there's the execution that I was hoping for. Good job. Well, you can always count on the repeaters. That's why I nerfed them in my own campaigns because they are a bit too strong. Yeah, you will redeem yourself. Unlikely that you will actually. Overwatch and Hogbite is soon going to deal with the sectoids. Alright, moving over to draw the Overwatch shots, really. Or not, okay. Continuing to move up. Double move for brace. Reload overwatch. Overwatch. Definitely overwatch and overwatch and I think we should be fine. These guys are just overwatching. Don't care. I can tell you Trojan doesn't care either. Mist and lightning reflexes. <laughs> well, dear sector, the mind bender. Very soon you're going to suffer the consequences of your little betrayal here. Moves up. Wow. What a boss. Target eliminated. Running. Okay, moving forward. Placable moves forward, and I think our sniper should move forward as well. Mind control, okay. Well, I don't mind that. On the move. Four T supplies, I like it. Uh, running and gunning to here. Just double checking, is this going to kill him? 100%, very good. Which means we're taking the other supplies. That's a hundred supplies right here. Before shotgun to the face ends uh, this mission. Cool. Well, that was a fun knock. Getting them all um, rallied up. And I think we got a few promotions. Plus, Hogbite was not injured, which in itself is great. 
want to use him on the future missions. All right. Good, very good. So we're taking Deflect, which is great in itself. Bladestorm is a no-brainer. And Channel. I'm being a bit selfish with Hogbite, but I promise you Templars can be carries. And it makes it all so much more worth it uh, once, we get, uh, once we get him to that higher stage. With Bladestorm now, oh, this is a huge power grab. Okay, in terms of uh, the abilities here, Smokescreen isn't uh, bad, Lobe Cover is definitely good, but I personally like Anti-Venom Stims a lot, uh, which gives you a passive 2.5 tile radius uh, kind of yeah, uh, ability that allows to uh, remove any active poison effect, uh, may periodically target an ally in range with special adrenaline injection uh, to remove disoriented, dazed, panic, and stun. Which just is great if you're putting them onto the front line, that is cool. Implacable on implacable. <laughs> that would be fun. Uh, that would be fun. This isn't bad either, the post, uh, the post healing. But I think Emergency Aid would be the best one out of all of uh, these options because it gives another healing ability and free action. Covering Fire together with uh, Sentinel is good if you were to build up kind of an Overwatch focused one. But I don't want to spend all of our points yet. Um, we got Salvo, we got Fire Support and we got uh, Skirmisher. I would have gone for Blast Padding but okay I respect uh, the decision there. Now, we got either Charge, which kind of is a melee attack, uh, or we got Rapid Deployment, which is fabulous. Um, it, spoiler, this is going to be the one that we're going to use, because it allows you to have another free grenade uh, uh, deployment, and reposition itself would be good uh, on top of it, but we're just going to go with that. Oh, two additional mines. Well, there we go. Uh, that is definitely worth it. Having three mines will make uh, mm, Mad Dog an absolute genius. It's a free action. I really like the mines. Very well designed because it's a free action, but it is highly limited in, in the way that it uh, works. Got 100 supplies. Advanced agility is good. Hair trigger is good. Lots of corpses. All of that is great. Uh, in terms of advanced agility, I'm thinking about kind of our assault infantry here. Yeah, that uh, defensive, extra defensive layer is always helpful. Upgrading a bond, which is also good. And Tepcat went into the blue screen protocol route. Smart move. Alien Alloys, which we have plenty of. I think he wanted to get supplies. Strategic resource located. Yeah, that was maybe not worth it, but okay, we get a couple of Alloys out of it. Uh, we're still kept uh, with regards to our context, but I know that we have another covert action. Alien Alloys would be better than the other alternatives. So yeah, let's start with those. You can always sell them uh, for money. Once we get our black market back, that is. Oh, and finally Plasma Rifles. Hello there. Are you kidding me? Improved beam weapons? Uh, well, uh, excuse me. Excuse moi. We're going to go for improved beam weapons. That's a phenomenal upgrade. Oh, wow. What a great upgrade. Okay, weapon upgrades here. 
Need more Alarium, okay, cool. The others are fine as well, but Plasma Rifle is good. I want that. Under the table, 30% uh, more premiums for goods. Not really a great, uh, a great uh, resistance order. So this one here is not bad. Not only for the dodge, but also because we get a facility lead. This one here is good. This one here isn't bad either. That's a really bad jo uh, mm, resistance order. I think we're actually going for the resistance contact. Seven days. Hogbite uh, gets another health because, you know, you want your tank to be tanky. I'll order my people to get underway immediately. And here we go. Oh, good. Blue screen protocol. Well, Shadowkeeper into Hunter's X. In the frost bomb, all excellent uh, choices, but I think plasma grenade tops all of it, and we'll get the first upgrade. <clears throat> Unfortunately, costed us some elarium, but that's a price I am willing to pay. Specifically, if we're getting. Uh, new Alarium and just in time look at that automated defenses high amount of robotic enemies Tapcat will eat that for breakfast um, This is going to be so easy with one two uh, blue screen rounds. Oh Yeah Not even a close one Okay, cool <clears throat> so I Tell you what Taking out the frost bomb here for now. And we're even giving him a third blue screen round because that's how good blue screen rounds are. <clears throat> they are phenomenal. Good. In terms of next steps, I think that here is fine. Hogbite could require some more. Dodge, well, he's already good, but uh, that could uh, become better. He's a lieutenant, so uh, overall fine. Might give him a, a covert ops for another promotion, uh, because there were a few that allowed for promotion, so he keeps up with the others and still continues to be trained. He's a bit of a VIP uh, in his treatment, but the, the reason why I'm doing this is not because I like Templars, this is also why I'm doing it, but the main reason behind it is Templars that are groomed and are properly prepared can be just such a massive asset. There is nothing uh, that can match the power uh, from a tanking perspective. And that's really what you want uh, in the end game. The ability to not rely too much on mimic beacons or positioning and kind of an oh shit situation when you pull another pack and you do have a frontliner that's kind of literally immune to everything. And just doesn't care about what uh, what the enemies are throwing at them so really really good um, the only problem is he doesn't have fortress but yeah you you can't have it all uh, maybe we're giving him a has hazmat uh, vest instead of a instead of a mind shield I will need to think about that either way is fine good and looking at the others I mean uh, Tapkit has yeah, a really good team. Lots of lieutenants is the litter of the um, the pick of the litter, so that'll be fine. Um, 
Squatty Skirmisher, I think we're going to do that, dismiss, because that will allow us to get um, another Skirmisher as a reward of a mission, and that Skirmisher would start up here and not at Squatty level, so uh, the, uh, that actually was is helping us more than it uh, would be hurting us. A Squatty Skirmisher at this point potentially wouldn't see much action unless Tepcat is like super super invested into playing with them but i think he has taken ross the shadow washington as his quote-unquote favorite character and that's okay we both have uh, one reaper's fantastic class as well nothing to nothing uh, to say against them okay cool that's it for today off to you tapcat um, let's go and rock that supply raid give us uh, the big fat Ilarium payoff that we want more supplies and then uh, potentially uh, some of the weapon upgrades that would be fine very soon our supply drop is coming so uh, the supply rate plus the supply drop together should allow us for um, more than one upgrade ball pups plus uh, plus uh, normal rifles and maybe even pistols should all be upgradable improved beam weapons is the icing on the cake and then we uh, just need to research the other weapons uh, to uh, get all of the upgrades. That's it from my end. Have a good one and see you soon. Bye bye guys